So just for those of you getting on, we're going to be talking about different herbs and plant medicine that you can use in each phase of the menstrual cycle and what happens actually in this 28 day cycle. Um, and yeah, basically what we full cycle and how that can impact what we do, um, with how we journey and use medicine. Yay. Hi, Dana. So welcome everyone. Dana's just getting on. Hey there. Can you hear me? Hello. Yeah. Hi. Dana is my co-founder of Ova Moon. We are um, a menstrual cycle balancing supplement. And basically we're two women who are pretty out there in our own way. We both live in Northern California and we were, you know, I was living in the woods and was curious if I didn't take anything and took time off on my menstrual cycle, what would happen? And I have to say it was five months of pretty trippy experience, not taking anything and just feeling my cycle. And we've both been on quite a journey. And so we're here to share with you today. Um, we are a monthly subscription service of a menstrual cycle balancing supplement, and it balances your cycle. And you can go to our website, ovamoon.com to learn more. And we'll be sharing more about it. We have a stay healthy special right now, $10 off your first three months, but we'll get into that later. Dana, how are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm just grateful to be here. Um, with the double blind crew and totally. um, just grateful for the healing power of psychedelic medicine. So I'm excited to talk about, it's like this really important intersection that I feel like um, whether you menstruate or not, I'm sure you know someone that does. Um, and it's important to just be aware of these things as we navigate life. Do you wanna give a little bit of your like psychedelic, um, what's it called, like resume, so to speak? <laughs> sure, and um, people feel free to message us questions while we're talking. We'd love to um, answer anything you're curious about. Um, so uh, I have tried all, I think um, most of the psychedelics that are out there. Um, I have a really deep relationship. They've been a really big part of my healing journey. Um, and I just really bow in reverence to the medicine that they can provide, um, when we're needing deep healing and also just like the fun adventures that they can provide and the openings that they allow us to really see the world with a different perspective. Um, and I think in my experience, they really augment like what's real and what's happening in my body and in my life and um and so i think that's really where this intersection is because like on a monthly basis as a menstruating body my hormones are changing and so how i'm feeling and where i'm at is changing and so when i sit with a medicine like depending on where i'm at in my cycle i'm gonna get uh, a very different experience and I think there's something really neat about that and like when we know that we can kind of like really think about like am I wanting more of a fun adventure or am I wanting to like really go inward and really sit with myself and reflect on like what's happening in my life or like am I wanting to like manifest and like birth this new career path and like, yeah, what is it that I'm trying to create? And like, what is it? What is my intention that I'm wanting in um, going on one of these journeys? Um, totally. Yeah. And I know you've done a fair amount of ceremony work as well um, with uh, cannabis and ayahuasca along the way. And I will get more into that um, later. For me personally, I have slightly less experience. I've dabbled in a few um a few of these um, medicines. But what I will say looking back, because in preparation for this, I was thinking, I had no idea where I was at um, in my cycle when I had these experiences. And I was wondering, you know, I've had some euphoric experiences and I've had some really challenging ones. And where was I in my cycle? But I think the segue into that is to share that for those of you who don't know, you don't just bleed 
right? Maybe we talk now a little bit about the cycle and then we can weave this in. You don't just bleed and then you're normal the rest of the month. We are ever changing as female reproductive bodied humans. Um, and so with those changes come really inevitable shifts in consciousness throughout our month. And so to break it down, Today, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the four phases of the menstrual cycle, because there are four, not just one or two, and what happens in those and how that can impact um, a psychedelic journey or any sort of journey that you might be wanting to take. And also then Dana is going to be chiming in with different herbs and plant medicines for each phase of the cycle that can really support your health and having a holistic experience or supporting you in other types of experiences should you want to partake. Am I right, Dana? Am I on board? Yeah, and like we're just kind of going to map out the shifts in consciousness that you're already experiencing just based on where your hormones are at. Um, if you're like having a healthy hormonal flow and um, and how that, yeah, just corresponds to like what kind of shifts in consciousness you're wanting to experience. Yeah. Cool. All right, let's get started. So I was thinking we could start with just letting you know, again, there are four phases of the menstrual cycle. There's the menstrual bleed phase that we're all familiar with, followed by the follicular phase, then ovulation, luteal, and then menstruation again, right? So there are these four phases. And biochemically, hormonally, your body is changing in each phase. You are not the same in each phase. So men who we love are on what's called a circadian rhythm. They, as are we, a circadian rhythm you may have heard is 24 hour cycle. We're all beholden to the 24 hour circadian rhythm, but we as menstrual body people also have what's called an circadian rhythm, which is 28 days. And just like you might not drink three cups of coffee at 9 p.m. because your circadian rhythm is having you wind down, there's certain things you do and don't want to do or want to be mindful of at different phases of your infradian rhythm, i.e. your menstrual cycle. Um, and so, yeah, I was thinking, Dana, we could start with the follicular phase, which is right after you've, start, you've bled, um, when you're kind of coming back out, and what is happening in that time because I know for me that is one of the trippiest experiences to be like deep down in the cave of like the menstrual journey of my period and then to like be like it's never gonna change I'm always gonna be like this and then to like suddenly feel this upsurge and this uptick of estrogen and testosterone and to kind of like re-emerge back into the world um and yeah, and, yeah. so yeah, I'll just say like at Ova Moon, we've sort of decided to name the phases like in corresponding to the energy that they have. And so we like to call the follicular phase activate because we're just like really energized and really a lot more social and creative, like maybe uh, more likely to take some risks and say yes to more of like the invitations that were offered. Um, it's and, a time for yeah, right. we just have like more energy for the cardio exercise. Yeah, so we can kind of go hard. We're most hormonally attuned to men, actually, similar to men in the late follicular ovulatory phase. And so there's a way that we're really able to like, and capable of like being in the world, being super social, just like Dana said. Um, sexually, there's definitely um, more of like an openness and a curiosity. We've got a lot of capacity and energy. And so that really corresponds if you're thinking about when you might want to imbibe in any sort of medicine journey or trip of, of any kind, that if you're wanting more of an outward adventurous, um, like kind of like fuck yes experience, that the follicular phase is really a great time um, to be to be saying yes to those sorts of experiences. You're really poised for being kind of outwardly focused in the world. And yeah, I'm, yeah. And I'll, I'll just say, like, if anyone hasn't, like, been tuned into this experience, it's really interesting. Um, I, like Ariel, like, when I was younger, just sort of took things. I, like, did not think about where I was at in my cycle at all. And um, just a few weeks ago, my house went out uh, camping, and we decided to take some psilocybin and... Like we're out on this walk, having this adventure, and like I just started 
feeling it coming on and like had to really go back to where our campsite was and I found myself like laying on the ground for most of the rest of the afternoon and my partner's like yeah you're in your late luteal phase like this is like just like you know really amplifying where you're at like what your body is wanting and in that like few days before menstruation like the body just really wants to rest and so I think sometimes medicines force us to be with what's alive whereas like a lot of times like we can use our mind and our thinking to like override what the body wants and I think we're kind of socially conditioned to do that like in a sense like especially as a menstruating body and like the idea of showing up for work and showing up the same every day and like showing up for school the same like every day and there's this expectation on us like if you're not feeling well like pop whatever and like show up in the same these medicines like really don't allow you to do that and especially something like psilocybin and so like yeah (laughs) it's like yeah there's there there's such a a symbiosis and a relationship and a dialogue happening and your hormonal state super informs how you show up in that relationship um yeah it's such an amplifier i think um i want to i want to i think that's a great example of the late luteal and we're about to we'll be getting there shortly I, for those of you who are joining, we're talking about the four phases of the menstrual cycle and the different shifts of consciousness that happen and how that can inform our experiences and our journeys and how, what we choose to take, how, when, and what we can we might be able to expect from taking them. Um, so we're in our follicular. That's right after menstruation. Um, hormones are on the rise. It's a great time to be out in the world. And I was thinking next we go into the next phase, which is ovulation which is our fertile period. Um, That's when our hormones are at their max. That's where they peak. And not only is this like a time to be out in the world, this is like the fuck yes time. This is like the group of you going to the beach and taking LSD. It's definitely the time where you're going to, um, at least hormonally, and again, right, there's this note that what's going on in your personal life and your interpersonal life inevitably also affects your experiences and also your history but from a biochemical standpoint what's going on for a person who has a menstrual cycle um, is that this is a really optimal time to be like social and engaged and out in the world your body is primed for that type of experience yeah and I'll just add that um it's easy just to like take these medicines and like have a good time and they really have this potent power when we speak our intention um, to help bring what we're wanting in our lives to life. And I think that's something like about this ovulation phase where like we're really connected to what's true for us and like what we're wanting and um, yeah, what we want to manifest in our life. So I think like this is like the perfect phase and the perfect time when you're like really wanting that shift in your life and like really wanting to be in the prayer and really wanting to create and birth something new like the yeah. egg is being released like speak what it is you want and fertile like, yeah <laughs> it's a fertile moment so we've got the um we got a question can you go over the phases again so we have menstruation which we all know where you get your period followed by the follicular phase where hormones are rising and now we're ovulatory phase that Dana was talking about, which we call manifest at Ova Moon, um, the manifest stage. And that's where, again, it's very fertile time. So, yeah. Do you have any experiences, Dana, where you knew you were ovulating or looking back, you were like, oh, that explains why that happened on a journey or in a ceremony? Yeah. I mean, it's really interesting. I think like since I've started to track, um, I've had experience, like I've had, I shared the experience of doing mushrooms in the late luteal. I've had an experience doing like ayahuasca during menstruation. Um, And I do think like that um, I've used cannabis in a more ceremonial way and 
like using it in prayer and like as a way to go on a journey. And I think um, that's where I really see this like ovulation time where I feel like I've used the medicine during that time and really felt like I was planting seeds in my life and really just got to watch them come to life so quickly. And, and I, yeah, I just see it as a really beautiful, potent time. And I, that's an area where I'd like to explore more in the future. Yeah. I know personally, as someone who's very emotionally sensitive, um, like since we've been tracking our cycle, I'm way more likely to say yes in the social circumstance to any sort of medicine in my follicular and ovulatory phase. And I understand that in my luteal phase, and going into my menstrual phase. Although I, I don't think I would ever go on a medicine journey in my menstrual phase, personally. I'm already on one. Um, but um, that I'm likely going to turn more internal. The harder things are going to come up. And so maybe we transition now to the luteal phase. So we've got menstruation, follicular, ovulatory, and luteal. And that's when our hormones peak at, right in that um, ovulation and they start to drop and introduces then progesterone um, which is a hormone that is calming to the mind and if you were to get pregnant would help maintain the pregnancy um, and so there's it you know if we were to say that the um, different phases of the cycle were seasons of the year the luteal phase is fall it's autumn it's the autumn of the cycle ovulation being the summer so um, in the autumn of the cycle, you know, the first half of it, there's a stability. And I would say for me, I would still feel comfortable doing medicine work. Um, but that, um, yeah, it's very much where I'm able to, I call it the get shit done phase. We call it the stability phase with Ova Moon. Um, yeah, and, and maybe Dana, actually, if you wanted to chime in right now about herbs for either the ovulatory, follicular, or luteal, what are some herbs that could be good for this time? Because I know when we get to menstruation, that's really what, and late luteal, that's really when herbs come in. But is there anything to support the body, any plant medicines in the follicular or ovulatory phases, as well as the luteal phase, that beginning of the luteal phase that could be supportive? Yeah, so I think in the follicular phase, our bodies just bled. It might be a little depleted from nutrients. This is so things that are after men after uh, menstruation. Yeah. Um, so we're in our follicular phase. We've just bled. Um, our bodies are a little depleted, and so things that are mineral rich and nutritive, like alfalfa leaf and nettle, um, will make a really great tea. And um, yeah, I'll just say to um, that it's really easy to think of these as like you can get them at the grocery store to maybe not like think of them as plant medicines but i really invite people to uh really see that like there's sort of different levels of plant allies and i know we think of like ayahuasca as the grandmother um and maybe thinking of like these more common plant medicine allies as like I don't know, your siblings or something where like, they're really going to help you out in the real medicine and the more of a relationship you build with them, the more you'll understand them and get to know them. Um, and so um, a few other things that are going to be helpful in this time, um, things like yellow dock, dandelion root and burdock root, they're going to really support your liver and it's cleansing. They're going to support uh, the blood like rebuilding itself. Um, and then things like ginseng um, can be a great adaptogen uh, herb. Um, it's estrogenic, and that can help support proper estrogen levels because you're really wanting a healthy amount of estrogen so that you feel that, like, energy to, like, go after it and um, right on. activate your life. Yeah. Um, and then so with I ovulation. Oh, sorry. Go. Um, yeah, I think with ovulation, there's um, the allies for people who are trying not to conceive that um, we're not going to talk about today, but um, I invite you to look into that if that's something you're interested in. Um, and I'll just say right now, oat straw is really like alive and vibrant. And it's a really, I think of it as like a fertility herb. It's just like 
full with all the nutrients and just like very like soft and um and i think in this point like when you're manifesting it's like um you're like planting these seeds but you're also like fertilizing them and watering them and this is an herb oat straw where you're really just like flooding your body with all the nutrients it needs to um, function properly. Awesome. I think let's move into the late luteal into menstruation because this is such a time where I personally experienced the biggest shift in consciousness. Um, sound good? Are you yeah. Good? Okay, cool. I, yeah, so. Yeah, the late luteal. I'll just phase. say too, like I yeah, think please. at Ova Moon, we like divide like the luteal like is a it's a two week phase uh for most people and there's a shift of oh dana you got froze all there's a shift in consciousness i know what she's going to say we call the first part of the luteal phase stabilized and the second part of the luteal phase internalized or internal period because there's such a change that happens biochemically in the body in the second part of the phase hopefully we'll get dana back um it, to peak and fall we're really in a completely different place um psychologically and biochemically and to honor that i think is a huge opportunity because really like you are a really different person biochemically. And if we jump into menstruation during this period, um, we just recently read a study that the two hemispheres of the brain, the right and left, have 25% more communication in the menstrual phase as they do any other phase. And so it's a huge difference what's going on in our bodies biochemically. And for those of you listening, I'm sure you've at the very least smoked a joint or tried something right before your period. And it's been a completely different experience and really maybe potentially challenging, rough, um, like you've had to go through something really hard, but it's shed light on something deep and powerful for you. And I think that that's in the late luteal phase, really a time when a lot can bubble to the surface and just to be aware of Dana's joining us again, just to be aware of that. Um, and I think the biggest, the biggest trip we all go on every single month is our menstrual cycle. Hi, welcome back. My phone got too hot. Maybe this topic is just too a excited. hot topic right now. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, I do want to say that, um, I just wanted to say that with the menstrual phase, right, we're I think it's definitely the trippiest time of the cycle. For me, it's like the two days before my period, I'm on another planet. And to think about doing medicine work in that time, like it's a journey, like it's gonna be completely different. And that there's something to be said, you know, I know I, I'm not as familiar with ayahuasca practice. And so, um, and I'm sure there are different schools of thought, but I know that um, with, the Lakota, I've been to a handful of Lakota ceremonies um, where the women are asked if they're on vision quest and they start bleeding either not to go on vision quest or to leave their hochika, their prayer space during that time. And in the Jewish tradition, and both Dana and I are Jewish, um, women have within traditional practice a lot of requests of, of, of self-protection during that time that are really the more I study this, the more it makes sense to me. Um, and so there is a way that we are so biochemically different in this time. Um, it's really worth considering when we think about what sort of journey we might go on and that we will likely be alone with that medicine in that journey because it's such an internal period of time. It is not the hyper social engaged moment of the ovulatory phase. It is our time for us to release and reflect and to know that going into a journey and yeah dana i'd love to hear your thoughts yeah um for the new people that joined we're talking about the different phases of the menstrual cycle and just how they might impact your psychedelic journey um and uh we've gone over the follicular phase which is sort of our activate phase um, we're wanting to do stuff, 
ovulation where we're like at the peak of our hormones manifesting um and now we're going to the uh, luteal which at the beginning of the luteal we're feeling like more stable emotionally um and then as we come into late luteal we're sort of forced to look inward we want to slow down a lot um and that's going to take us into menstruation which is really this place of surrender um and i think um I would say there's not like a good or bad time to be doing these medicines. It's just to really think about like what it is you're wanting from them. Um, and I'll just say, yeah, in my last ayahuasca journey, you know, you put it on the calendar and like sometimes your cycle's changing. You don't always know what you're gonna get um, when you plan something like that, like three or four months in advance. Um, and so I got to ceremony and my menstruation was just starting. And like Ariel said, we're a lot like more perceptible to like the energies around us. And it really requires a level of like sort of putting up this layer of protection for yourself um, so that you're not like confused about like what's your energy and what's someone else's energy, which I think is a big thing in ayahuasca. It's like a big reason why they ask us to abstain from sexual contact um like a few days before and a few days after because we're like so deeply in like our soul's journey that like if it gets intermingled with someone else's soul's journey it's like really hard to parcel out like what's ours and what's someone else's and so um for yeah. me the experience um because i've done a lot of that work around um like knowing what's mine and what is not mine. Um, it was definitely a journey around surrender and just like, like, yeah, not having any control and then like really being okay with that surrender. I think there's a lot of times like during menstruation, like people want to like push themselves and do things that they can't. And I think um, that journey was really a teaching point for me about like, I might be a complete mess, you know, like as we, you know, like, I like to think of it like with the seasons we talked about, like late luteal is really like like autumn, like the leaves are falling and we get to winter and like things are, you know, like the leaves are all over the ground. It's kind of a mess, like it's kind of a beautiful mess though. And so just like really feeling that like, we're kind of like on the ground, like as like this beautiful mess of like a puddle of ourselves. Um, and like the more we can surrender to that, like the less like painful experience it is, like the less we're resisting what's naturally happening. Um, and I'll just quickly speak to a few herbs that can be great during that time. Um, so you're really wanting to calm the nervous system to allow yourself to like really accept that surrender. And so in Ova Moon, we use Shatavari. It's an amazing adaptogen. Um, there's other ones like ashwagandha and tulsi that are really beautiful. Um, tulsi is great to have in a tea. Um, borage can be really great to support your adrenals, calm that stress down. And then I think nettles are just good um, all cycle round. Um, and they're um, a great one for that phase as well. Um, and then licorice root can be really great one for PMS and um, calming stress for people. Awesome. Yeah, and I'm noticing there are some some male bodied people watching this. And I think it's really great that you're here because, you know, if you're in relationship with a woman and she's on this cycle, it's great to know when you're having these journeys with them and to be able to think about them. And um, yeah, that we're all aware that women are not men biologically and we know that but that biochemically there's some really big differences um at play throughout our cycle that impact our experience inevitably on these journeys um i i do want to say i know for me when i'm in my menstrual phase in my late luteal phase it's really hard for me to be able to tell where my energy begins and ends and sometimes i'll take on other things in a way that i might um in a way that i'm completely clear about what's going on in my follicular and ovulatory phase um, comparatively. So 
Yeah, and but like maybe there's like this moment where you're really wanting to grieve and you find yourself like as someone who like has a hard time crying. Um, maybe like that late luteal menstrual phase is the time that you're going to want to take the medicines because it might actually support you um, in like coming to that place of surrender and like allowing like whatever emotions need to move to move. Um, and it's really, it's really neat. When we understand the intelligence of our bodies, we can kind of use that to our advantage of like what we're intellectually knowing that we're needing. I want to plug over moon really quickly in this idea of what Dana just said, how we don't, we want to be able to choose and to curate our experiences. And so being educated about these shifts in consciousness throughout the four phases of the menstrual cycle feels really important. And that we want to balance our biochemistry as much as possible. And so, you know, you said PMS, and I think we would be missing the boat if we didn't address the big elephant in the room in terms of shift in consciousness that can happen for so many women in their cycle. This way that what didn't bug you last week suddenly drives you absolutely nuts, you know, or that suddenly your reality seems to completely shift somehow. And that some of that is an inevitability of the hormonal fluctuations of your body, and some of it isn't. Some of it is a result of nutritional deficiency or excess or deficiency of the hormone. And that's where we really focus our attention with overmoon is balancing out the hormonal and nutritional micronutrient component of the female reproductive system so that those things aren't getting in the way um, and that you can experience these natural shifts and fluctuations in a healthy way, um, not in a way that they overtake you. Yeah. Yeah, it's real. It's that like, um, like we can't really like control what's happening around us, but we can sort of control like how we engage with it and really, uh, yeah, think about what we're needing. And like, I really like these plant medicines are just such deep medicine and such a beautiful tool to move through whatever you're wanting to move through and. The reality is like, yeah, if you're going to smoke a joint in your follicular phase, you're going to be like, yeah, let's go adventure. Let's climb a mountain. Um, and then you smoke that same joint. It can be the same exact weed and you're in your late luteal phase and you become one with the couch. And that's just what's going to happen um, because of where your body's at. And um, the more we acknowledge that and learn about that, like, I think like the happier we can be and like the less confused we can be about what's happening to us. Yeah, I love it. It's such a beautiful mark of agency and relationship between plants and people. Yeah. Yeah. So, so um, if you want to find out more about the menstrual cycle, you can check us out at ovamoon.com um, and email us any questions you have. We have a contact button at the bottom of the page. Um, we have a menstrual cycle balancing supplement. If you're interested in finding more stability in your menstrual cycle um, and like learning to feel the cycle. Um, and we also yeah, have a, check special, out. Stay healthy, a stay healthy special. Um, in the checkout discount code, you can write stay healthy, all capital letters and get $10 off your first three month subscription. And I'll write that in the comments right now. Okay, thanks everyone for tuning in. Yeah, thanks so much for coming. We're available for questions, follow us on Instagram. And I just wanna give a shout out to the women of Double Blind and what they're doing in leading the consciousness work and plant medicine world with such thought. Um, I'm really moved by what y'all are doing and that you invited us and you see the importance here of the work that we're doing and um, so, so grateful and appreciative for this invitation. Okay. Um, we will, I'm going to just write stay healthy. That's for $10 off on the comments. Um, first three months. And feel free to private message us if um, you have any more questions at Open